So Paul, when I look at this layout, it's quite large and it seems to be spread over quite an interesting floor that's sort of not even, eh? Yes, it's very, so, very uneven. So with all these connections between modules, there must be something you have to do to try to keep it as smooth as possible. The well, one thing we use is a laser level that's up here on the wall. It spins away, shining its beacon around the room. Yeah. Then we use a stick like this, which we put on the rail head. Yeah. And the red line should appear at the, up at the top in the between the black lines. Doing this on all the way around the room, it uh, levels all the tracks to the same level. I see. And makes the connections of modules much easier to do. <laughs> so, how come you decided to do that versus just sort of taking a level and putting it on the, over the track in each module? With a level, it gets into a problem of uh, it's close enough. Somebody's got the level there and it, the bubble's almost in the middle. Yeah. And they say it's close enough. Yeah. The next guy does the same thing, and pretty soon you're going uphill or you're going downhill. Yes. And you got a problem. You run out of adjustment on the legs or mm -hmm. whatnot. So we switch to this. Yeah. Laser so with, with it's because mostly of the size of the layout that yeah. you don't want the. Uh, the error to be exasperated. Nope. And we've used this upstairs in the ballroom where the room is uh, 65 feet by 125 feet. Yeah. Successfully. And it works very well. Oh, that's great. What other sort of interesting little features do you have here that you might want to talk about? Well, we have a, J a computer running JMRI here. Yeah. At present, it's just uh, looking at the local map. Right. But, uh, so it tracks everything that's going on in the Digitrack system, right? Yeah. On a, what, a second-by-second second basis sort of thing? Yeah, well, actually, real-time. Yeah. So if we look down here, that's the locomotives that are running on the layout right now. Right. And uh, what all the conditions are, what the F, F, F numbers are that have been selected on each locomotive. But so it automatically picks that up. Yes, oh, but we also cool. use it for programming locomotives, the uh, addresses and speeds and sounds and mm -hmm. things like that. That you know, normally you got to be punching in little CV numbers through a throttle or something. I noticed that uh, as I was going around the layout, there was a touchpad too that you're using for turnout control. Yes, running talk through JMRI. Yeah, through. Wi-Fi. Okay. So the JMRI runs a Wi-Fi network in the room. Yeah. That can be used with throttles or anything else. So this is running. This is basically a throttle sitting here. Okay. If I can get it the. Okay. See, that's a normal throttle that I could. From engine driver. Yeah. Yeah. Which is an Android type thing, I take. Yeah. So I could pick it up and I could you know select the locomotive and I can run the locomotive right from this touchpad. As for controlling the all the turnouts that are on Castor River here. All, all the turnouts in Castor River have tortoise switch machines under there with switch it modules to run them. Now these modules are wooden framed with uh, foam. Yes. How did, how did you attach your uh, tortoises to the, uh, the layout with foam underneath? The tortoise is actually in a slot in the foam. Okay. So uh, I have a hot wire cutter that is specially designed to carve out a slot in the foam using a template right. so that the tortoise machine fits up tight in the, the foam. Then the is, is, mechanism, it, is it like a force fit or, uh, or do you have to glue just, it in? No, it's just slightly snug. Okay. It's just snug enough that it doesn't fall out. Okay. You know, but you could actually go in there and slide it back out if you wanted to. Okay. And the mechanism then is down at the point where it's just below the foam, mm -hmm. and it uses a crank mechanism coming up through the foam to operate the turnout. So at the surface then, where you have your slot under the turnout, do you use like a styrene box or something? No, there's to... no slot under the turnout. Okay. The turnout is... Uh, we back up back here. Take a look at this turn out there. It's, yeah. it's a wire coming up through a post that just goes back and forth. I'll move that one. So, 
So there's just a slot in the foam then? No, there's no slot. It's just a, it's a brass, there's a brass tube through the foam. And yeah. it's a, a pit, the wire's pivoting on the, in the brass tube from here. Okay. And it goes down to the bottom. So under the layout, you've got a, uh, a situation where the tortoise machine is press fit into the foam. Yes, it's horizontal. And, and it's horizontal. Foam. And so the, uh, the the throw bar that pushes out is horizontal. Too. Is horizontal as well, and then it goes into a link. It goes into a little link loop on the end. Yeah. And there's a piece that goes up. So as this goes back and forth, yeah. it twists that way. The wire vertically in the layout. Right. Which then comes up through here mm -hmm. to that point there, which twists the this wire vertically. There it goes. Hey, Mr. Goodman. Yes, Mr. Goodman. Yes, Mr. Goodman. This is a so that's underneath the mm -hmm. no, wire you, on the tortoise is moving back and forth. You've got a layer of cork there, I take it as well. Yes, there's a cork road bed under the, the, the track. Okay. Yeah, it's a great system. It seems to work very smoothly. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Paul. Okay, thanks very much. Have a great day. Yes. Goodbye.